Um, I'm going to get started with some introductions uh, of our own here. So all of you are here for hopefully <laughs> the same thing. Uh, you've got two splats and you're wondering what to do with them. So we're here to help you with that. We're super excited. Uh, we have um, two very special guests on the line today who, uh, like yourselves, were winners of our uh, Unruly Grant. Um, so they started out with two splats. Uh, they dove into our online resources um, and, you know, explored some of our virtual learning um, resources and now uh, have a full plan and are planning to use it for the fall. So I'm excited to tell you all about it. All right, so I'm Lauren. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the one who sent you the emails, <laughs> to, or actually Ariana's the one who sent you the emails today. Uh, but I'm her, uh, her colleague on the marketing side. Ariana um, is our SPLAT specialist. Um, Ariana, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. It is so wonderful to see so many people logging on this evening. Um, we're really just excited to get everybody motivated and inspired about all the wonderful ways that we can use SPLATS, um, a true testament to the Unruly team. Um, we've really come up with ways that you can use the SPLATS in any format that the fall will take this year. And so I'm excited for um, Lauren and Kathy and Lori as well to share with you some of the amazing ways that they're also starting to integrate it. So thank you to everyone for joining. And um, of course, I'm on the chat if there are questions and you know you can email me with any follow-up questions after that. Awesome. Thanks, Ariana. And uh, joining us, we have uh, Kathy Truesdale. She is a music and performing arts teacher from Canterbury Schools. Uh, Kathy, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kathy, and uh, I am a SPLATS winner. I'm so excited. I I've been able to work a little bit with some students, both virtually and in the classroom, and I have probably encountered just about every problem that you could imagine. So I'm available as a resource if you, if you need help with anything. Thanks, Kathy. So good luck. Kathy, uh was Kathy and Lori actually both uh, were part of our boot camp program, so they can tell you a little bit more about that too a little later on. Uh, and Lori, she's a technology education specialist uh, from Sterling Middle School. Uh, Lori, you want to give yourself a little intro? Hey, everybody. I am Lori Smith from Sterling, Colorado, and I won the splats last spring when we started going remote. Um, jumped on a webinar for. Um, ideas for remote learning and uh, that at the time I didn't realize Unruly Splats was putting on and they offered the, um, the grant and I applied and I was so excited, but I didn't know what to do with the Splats at first. So I can totally relate. Um, took a class this summer that the school district wanted us to take and um, that got me excited about them because I used it to create a module in my class and that's where I started really getting excited and interested in the splats. So yeah, lots of fun. I've been having a lot of fun with them so far. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Lori. You, you told us a, an anecdote yesterday that your, your power went out and you were using it on your phone. And so I love that. that was yeah, awesome. we, we had a power outage for about an hour. I had sixth graders. So I um, I actually didn't use them on my phone. What I did was I used my mobile hotspot on my phone to connect to the Chromebooks and because we didn't have internet or anything. And so, yeah, and it was kind of neat because the room was dark and so the splats really lit up. It, it was it was pretty fun. We really had a good time. They were crazy, but it was fun. <laughs> that sounds so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna launch a poll. I just kind of want to get to know everybody uh, on the line a little bit, so um, we can sort of frame uh, frame the uh, the presentation today. So I want to know um, how are you starting this school year? It, for some of you, it's probably already started. I know Kathy, she said it's been you know three weeks already, going to week four of school, so everyone's on a different timeline. But let us know: uh, Are you virtual for now, in person, hybrid? You're not sure yet. Um, or some other thing that I haven't thought of. <laughs> I always throw the other in there just in case. Um, yeah, let us know. So I'll give a couple more seconds for people to write in. And then I'll share the results. It looks like a pretty good split right now between in-person and virtual, but most 
are saying hybrid. Oh, virtual is catching up. Wow, it's almost an even split. Let's, all right, I'm gonna end the poll now. And I'll share the results here. So you can see, so hybrid model is uh, most common, but there's a pretty decent split between virtual and in-person, so that's helpful to know. And I'm also just curious, and I also like polls, I wanna know, um, have you had a chance to explore any of our SPLATS activities yet, or just the SPLATS themselves uh, at all? Are you brand new? And I won't be offended if you haven't even opened the box, because that's what this whole webinar is for. So um, yeah, let me know what your sort of uh, experience level is. Have you had a chance to explore anything or just not yet? Okay, a couple more seconds and I'll end the poll. All right. All right, so most people have browsed but haven't had a chance to look in depth. That's perfect, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming everybody. Um, that's great. So moving on, let's unbox our slot. So I literally just got this box from our office. It's brand new, it still has the packaging intact. So I'm gonna unbox it with you and I encourage you to, uh, to do it with me. So we're gonna take all, all the wrapping, which is gonna be fun too. Um, and fun fact, if you look underneath the box, um, flaps, so here's our two slots right here, uh, but if you actually take the box, look underneath the flaps, there's some secret messages under there. So I encourage you to check that out, but for now, I'm going to put that aside. And there may or may not be a tab here where, um, where the batteries are located, so we're going to need to pull that tab right out. That's a plastic tab. So we're going to pull that out of both of our slats here, pulling it out. Okay. And then there's an on button on the back there, and then it should be a red light that starts to flash for both of them. All right, and that just means that it's searching uh, for a Bluetooth connection. So whenever you see that red flashing light, sometimes they get disconnected even after they're connected. If you see that red flashing light, all that means is that it's searching for a Bluetooth connection and you have to reconnect them. All right, so one quick note on compatibility with Splats. Um, so you're only gonna need to use our web app. You're gonna need either a Chromebook or a laptop that's not a Chromebook. Can be, I'm using a MacBook right now with an internet access and a Chrome browser. So the Chrome browser part's pretty important. Uh, and then for connection to physical Splats, uh, you're gonna need to make sure that your laptop or device, uh, it could be an iPad as well, has Bluetooth 4.2. Uh, and then you need to make sure that your iPad also has the most updated operating system. All right. All right, so um, we've turned on our spots. We're at step three right now. So next we need to create an account on the Unruly app. Uh, so we're gonna send you a username and password after the webinar, because we're gonna explore, I'm actually gonna give you a little tutorial on our new app. So this is app 2.0. Uh, we haven't even released it yet to, uh, <laughs> to our uh, fully, fully customer base. We're just starting to get people onboarded. So I'm really excited to share with you. Um, it's, it's awesome. A lot of the things that were not included in our old app that we, we got feedback from customers, uh, we've added new features to it um, to make it even better. And so the next step is you can connect your physical spots to the app. Um, and we're gonna get into that a little bit more and then we can explore. So, all right, I'm gonna exit here and head into our app. All right, can everyone still see the coding screen now? So this is the Unruly app, uh, app 2.0. Uh, you'll see there's splats on the side tray here on the left-hand side. And so this little on button, this is going to uh, ask us, prompt us uh, to connect our splats virtually. So I've got my splats here. I'm gonna pair it. And so you'll know it's paired when the green lights up. 
and I'm going to turn on spot number two. And you can see this slot just lit up. All right. So that's how that works. If you're interested in exploring our old app, um, so this is not app 2.0 yet, but you can access it. I'm going to type it in the, actually maybe Ariana can type it in the chat, app.unruly-studios.com. Uh, you can play around with it in there, but this is our app 2.0. Um, and so this you're going to need to, a username and password for, and we're going to send that to you uh, as part of the trial until November 1st uh, with the grant. So this is accessible for all customers and we're giving you sort of early access um, trial. So how it works is this is a block coding. And so block coding is really uh, the simplest way to break down the basics of coding. And it was started, I think one of the earliest uh, groups who started it was Scratch. Uh, and so I'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with Scratch and um, code.org. And so this is literally the same. Uh, it's really just breaking down the basics and the fundamentals of coding into a really um, easy, easy to understand and accessible way. And so I'm gonna show you uh, the starting block. So there's two ways to start a program. Uh, you can either press a spot or start the program. So I'll drag both of these out here. And so to start the program, you press run. So I'm gonna add maybe some lights here. So light splat one with color green and let's light splat two because we have two spots connected here with color red. And that's gonna happen when I press splat one. And the fun thing is I can also press ID and that's gonna tell me which splats are which. And so it's actually gonna light up in two places. It's gonna light up on the screen and also on my splats. And so now I know this is splat one. And so when I press it, it lights up red. Oh, I have a bug in my code. <laughs> this is splat two now. All right, so let's try again. This lights up green and this lights up red. And so you notice that I had a bug in my code there. What happened was I forgot to add light splat two with color red. So I was saying light splat one with color green and light splat one with color red and it was confused because it couldn't do two things at once. Um, so then we can add sounds. We can say uh, play sound splat when splat is pressed and then it makes a splat sound. I'm just gonna make sure that my sound is actually, that you guys can hear my sound. There we go. So I'll do it again. Hopefully you guys can hear it. All right, so that's the basics. Uh, and then you can even go into here, go into music, and this is going to come in handy when we start getting into the MIDI and making music with splats. Um, we have scoring here. This is going to come into play with pretty much all of our, our games when you want to keep score. Uh, and then you have variables and functions and, and math as well, which is also important for scoring and controls that are saying, you know, if this is happening, do this or telling you when to repeat and all sorts of different handy um, controls. And so the second way to start a program is by pressing run. And so I'm going to drag this now into when program starts and we'll see what happens when I press run. Same thing happens. This light's green, this light's red. So there's really just two ways to start a program, super duper simple. All right, so I'm gonna go back. Oh, before I do, I'll give you a little bit of a tour of the app as well. So uh, there's a couple little sidebar here. So you'll be able to see um, profiles and projects. So one of the really great things about app 2.0 is this thing called a game locker that allows you as an instructor and as an educator to be able to access all of your students' work by logging into the student profile. So there's no student accounts, there is a school account. And then all of the students will have their own unique profiles uh, and it's there you'll be able to access their work through the game logger. And so uh, if we go into projects, you know, you can import a project um, by, if you save sort of the, the code, you can, um, download upload it into here so that you can share code between different devices uh, or you can also access it through this game locker here so i have one game saved so i'm going to press this and load the project and here our project is so it's pretty easy 
And then if they had other games saved, you would be able to access them in their profile as well. And so anytime a student creates a new project, okay, I'll just make a real quick one. So when slot one is pressed, light slot one with color green, let's save this project. I'm gonna name it green slots. You have to choose the number of slots. That's one, say two players, description, lighting a slot green here. And then I'm gonna save it. And so now, when I click on my projects, I'll see there's this new project that just popped up. And when I sync it to the game locker, all that's doing is just basically saving, saving the changes and making sure that all the changes are uploaded to the game locker. So this is a new feature. The game locker doesn't exist in our old app. Does anyone have any questions about the game locker? Feel free to write us in the chat. Um, I'm gonna cover a lot today. So feel free to, to let us know if we're going too fast. Uh, too slow or if you have any questions on what this all is. And again, we're going to give you a login to this so you can explore on your own, which is the fun part. So um, a great place to start is um, checking out the tutorials. So if you click here, um, we have a number of really, really awesome tutorials um, on how to get started with slots. So here's one. And it's really a step-by-step. -step. So you'll see it prompt you on the screen. And you can exit it at any time. And the great thing about it is you can kind of follow along as it, as it does. So you can go into the light section and be like, oh, okay, I want to light LED over here. And then it just sort of gives you sort of a step-by-step -step process. So there's, I believe, four or five tutorials in total that you can do. Awesome. And I think there's also example games, which are a great place to start if you're brand new to block coding. So you can sort by number of slots or activity type or number of players. I like to do number of players because that's an easy one. So if you click on the drop down, we've got all sorts of games uh, for one to two players, three to four players, and five and six players. So this is still in the beta mode, so there's lots of <laughs> different whack-a-mole versions. <laughs> uh, but then we also have, uh, depending on the type of activity type here. All right. Perfect. So let's play a game. I think that's what's coming up next. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. So before we get started, I'm just going to talk through exactly what this is. So um, this is a game that's in our SEL activity pack. Uh, and what's great about it is the code already comes with it. So you can actually download a, a TXT file and I'll show you how to do that um, and upload the code. So if you just sort of wanna dip your toes in or get your students collaborating, the focus of this activity is to build community and to get your students working together towards a common goal. And so the idea is that they have to work together to decide on what they're gonna vote on. Would you rather do X or Y? Uh, and so the team that can get together and agree on X or Y first wins and they get to play the game. Um, so we're actually gonna play it together. Um, and I'm hoping to ask you guys, uh, what do you think? What are some would you rather uh, questions that we could use for this game? And we're gonna play it live together. So write us in the chat, would you rather eat 10 pounds of chocolate or one cricket? <laughs> one chocolate covered cricket. I'm craving chocolate today. Um, awesome, yeah. Keep, keep some ideas coming in the, uh, in the chat and we're gonna, I'm gonna get set up to play this game. Okay. I'm gonna hop back in here. Oops. Ooh, this is another something I forgot to show you. So this is a new feature of App 2.0 as well. Um, this is our planning screen where, and it's great for PE teachers. I, I noticed a number of you were PE teachers when you were introducing yourselves in the chat. So this is the first time that you're really able to actually plan out where spots will go uh, in a physical space. And so we have some fun backgrounds here that you can play around with, uh, but let's do a gym floor here. So you can increase the number of spots. Say you wanna play four corners. They're gonna go over here. 
We need one more over here. And then you can actually write notes if you want to add um, students will line up in a row, something like that. Um, you can add notes here. And so you can make this slot smaller or bigger. You can add another note. Uh, so this is a really fun feature that we just added um, that's new to this app as well. Okay, sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but I'm gonna go into projects and I'm gonna upload our would you rather. All right. So um, this code looks a little bit scary. Don't worry about it. Um, how I uploaded it, I'll show you too, is say we start a new project. So that's gonna bring our screen down to blank. And I want to um, import a project. That means um, in the activity pack, we give you a download link to a text file. So I'm gonna click import here. And I'm gonna bring up, would you rather? Actually, this TXT file here. And then that's gonna in, it upload it to your game locker. All right, so in the code we have, uh, like we were talking about, the when program starts. Uh, so that is gonna set our splats to um, basically setting votes A and B, whatever are the two things are that we choose. And then when splat one is pressed, that's going to actually increase the points. But it's not going to show us how many votes there are until we press splat five, which is going to tell us what the actual count is. Um, so I'm going to read some of these things here. Ariana, any good ones? Uh, or I'm sure there's lots of good ones. Which ones should we use? I like this. Would you rather have the superpower to fly or turn invisible? Let's do that one. So that's great. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, I'll do, we can do another one too. A student suggested, would you rather be able to speak any language in the world or be able to talk to animals? I thought that was a great one too. Uh, but let's do the superpower one. So would you rather have the superpower to fly or turn invincible? So when the program starts, so everyone has to vote. Would you rather be able to fly? Let's make A fly or B invincible. So I'll read that in the chat. B equals, is it invisible? Awesome, Ooh, lots of A's, wow. <laughs> All right, so A is fly. Let's restart here. Project. going to restart this because it's timed out a little bit. Bear with me. We're getting lots of votes. This is awesome. So this is a fun game that you can play virtually uh, with your students um, or in person, uh, but it's a great way just to sort of get students working together. You can put them into breakout groups and decide on what they want to vote on. Uh, and you can, I, we we're all big fans of student rules here uh, at Unruly. So uh, giving students different rules. Uh, and working together to, um, to solve the problem. So, awesome. Thanks everyone for voting. All right. Kathy, did you come to the SEL webinar that we did? Yes, I did. Awesome. Did you have a favorite, a favorite activity that, uh, that you're going to try out with your students? Oh, they were all good. Yeah. I would suggest, I would suggest everyone to look at the packet um, that's available because there's so much information in there. Yeah, so our SEL pack is available on our website. 
So actually, if we go into here, it's also on our portal, uh, social emotional learning. And it's all, it's all in one pack, which is awesome. And you just click download. All right, so I think it's being a little slow since I'm showing you. I'm gonna sign in here. Awesome. And so this is an example of all the profiles in your school. So if you had a different, I say this is one classroom, right? One school. Um, and you're going to have students with different profiles. So I'm Cyan Cuckoo. So I'm going to click on that. And so you'd be able to access all of your students' projects uh, through this screen. We're going to go load our projects here. Nice. All right, let's try that again. Still in, still in early, early, still crushing some bugs on this, so bear with me. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna run the game. It's when program starts. And so slots one and three are going to be our counters and slot five is gonna tell us who won. All right, so A, we got one B. So I'm gonna start and it's gonna make a, a sound as soon as we do too. We got a bunch of A's, a couple more A's, one B, another B. Notice that the actual numbers aren't showing up because it's hidden in the code right now. And so it's counting on the LEDs here. So let's see. The total looks like A Y one. This is not a, an exact science. I didn't count them <laughs> all perfectly, but I think there was definitely more A's than B's here. Um, do we want to play one more time? Any other ideas for different would you rather's? I like the have fried chicken or fried catfish. That's a good one. Or would you rather live in a treehouse or a cave? Nice. Take the dog to the park or ride a horse on a trail. These are awesome. Okay, let's try the treehouse or cave one. So let's say treehouse is A and cave is B. So this game, question from uh, Maggie, does this game use a physical slot? So um, it can. So right now um, I only have two slots connected. So it's best to play this. You need, you're going to need slots one, two, you're going to need three slots uh, to play this game as it's coded right now. But you could, this could easily be a voting machine game where you only need two slots. And actually I'll talk about that a little later in this webinar. So you can use physical slots, uh, but this specific, um, the SEL pack was designed uh, to be able to use virtually as well. So you could do both. You could use it with physical slots or you could use it um, with virtual slots only. Okay. All right, so we got, it was treehouse or cave, and treehouse was A and cave was B. All right, so let's see. Sorry, I got to scroll. There's a lot of people voting. This is awesome. Okay. All right, so question from Nicole, do the answers that are in the chat go directly in there automatically or do you have to manually input them? Uh, so I'm manually inputting them by clicking on uh, this button here. All right, so we got two A's, which I clicked. We got B, an A, and an A. A couple more A's, a bunch of A's. We got one more B. Bunch of A's. Awesome. Okay, so um, that's a great question about inputting it manually. So um, I'm kind of showing you this as I think you could lead it in a Zoom class as well. So if you are all virtual with your students, um, you could share your screen, show them the code, you can walk through how, sort of how it works and then have them go into breakout groups to decide, okay, you know, each team gets to pick, the whole class gets to vote, on one thing and whoever can come to a consensus on what the two things are first wins and we get to play their game. 
or maybe you want to, you know, if you, I don't know if you, how, how large your classroom sizes are, but you can vote on all the things. Uh, but the goal is to get them to talk about it. And then with this specific activity pack, there's some discussion questions at the end um, that are all based on the CASEL fr or CASEL framework for SEL. Um, so this is an SEL specific lesson, but it's also just really fun. So we're going to click on splat number five. And look, house one. 17 to 3. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Lori has a question. What button are you pressing? It doesn't show up on our end. Okay, so right now as the program is written, uh, when you press splat 1, splat 1 is vote A, and splat 3 is vote B, and splat 5 is the, what's going to show the winner. So we're using splats 1, which is right here, splat 3 right here, and splat five. And so for all everyone who every time somebody voted A, I was clicking on splat one. And every time somebody voted B, I was clicking on splat three. You'll notice that it's having a different sound as well. And that's all written in the code here. So splat one for vote A is giving us a ding sound and splat three for vote B is giving us a pop sound. Does that make sense? So I'm pressing splat one for A, splat three for B, and splat five for B. And that's one more chair. That's all written in the code. Awesome. Yes, exactly. So you have to count the number of times that they're pressed. Okay, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna move on a little bit because I'm gonna get into games with two splats. So I think a lot of your questions might be answered and then we'll definitely be time at the end to ask questions as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the slides. Oops. All right. Great questions, though. Okay. Um, so we have a user portal that I definitely encourage you to explore. Um, all you have to do is go to our website on relaysplats.com and go to log in and create an account. And there you'll be able to see all of our resources. So we've got lesson plans, we've got student facing activities, we've got slide decks, we've got guides, we've got flashcards, we've got everything. So um, this is just a great place to kind of dive in. If you're brand new to block coding, then definitely check out our intro to block coding guide, which is right here. Uh, the activity that we just played on our virtual app, um, that's on the social emotional learning uh, activity pack. Uh, and then we also have, uh, so all of our virtual only ones are the Morse code and the um, musical splats. I shouldn't say virtual only. They work for, all of our lessons work for in-person, all of them. Uh, but we do have ones that were specifically designed with virtual learning in mind. Uh, and those are on here as well. All right, and these are our virtual activity packs. So they, we have a ton. Um, these ones, again, specifically were created for virtual learning in mind. Um, and we have two guides for getting started. We have our Chrome guide. So if you're going to be using a, a laptop or a Chrome, it doesn't have to be a Chromebook, um, then definitely download this activity. This is really just a tutorial for how to get started. Um, and then for our, we have an iPad one as well for iOS. So if you're going to be using an iPad with your splats, then we have a, a different guide for that. Um, they're very, very similar, but there's just a couple different tweaks. Uh, we have a Morse code activity pack, uh, which is really fun. This one is great for um, middle school. Uh, we have a social emotional learning pack, which is pretty much good for K through eight, all ages. Um, we have a musical splats activity pack, which Kathy maybe can talk to you a little bit about um, in a moment. And then we have a fitness activity pack, which is all about getting your students sweating. Uh, whether they be from home or in person. Um, and then we have a hybrid learning guide, which is just sort of a couple tips and tweaks for how to use our activities in a hybrid learning setting where you might have some in-person time and some virtual time. Yeah. Kathy, did you want the musical? You did this over the summer uh, when you only had two splats. Can you tell us how that went? Yes, we actually did the whole thing virtually um, so that the students had a chance to do it online. And what we did was I broke it down into really simple steps. Um, the information that the team has put together is amazing. 
and I was able to take small bits and work through it. And these were second grade rising into third grade. So these were young kids. Um, familiar with the hour of code and with coding, but uh, we started very basically and then built from there. And it was over uh, five hours, an hour a day for five days. We started off with the uh, drum machine. And of course the kids went gaga over that. And then they, and then we went on to uh, the boom box. And then the very last thing was the virtual DJ. And the kids are still talking about it. I was at school today and you know, this was back in what, June? And they were saying, oh, you guys are gonna love this. So the kids were very excited about it. And they were excited that they saw what they were doing virtually come to life in real life. So I, I can attest to the fact that it is, it, it, it's good both ways. Awesome. You, had, you said you had one student who actually created their own song too, right? We have, I had several, but there was one that was trans, transferring all of the music that he loved into the MIDI uh, capabilities. And so he was started out with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and, imag and ended up with some Imagine Dragons songs. So <laughs> it was pretty, pretty incredible. That's awesome. So uh, as a quick plug for our webinar tomorrow, if you're interested in learning more about these virtual activity packs, we're actually doing a whole webinar on it tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Um, maybe Ariana can share the, the link to that. But if you're interested in learning a bit more deep dive, if this is like easy peasy for you and you're like, yep, I know what I'm doing, um, or you're interested in just learning more about our specific activities for virtual learning, um, please check out the webinar tomorrow. We'll definitely talk more about it. All right. Okay, and this is actually a video that Kathy sent me <laughs> the other day. Uh, this was in person, so I know you were doing some of the activities virtually as well, but this is sort of your first uh, this, time using them in the classroom, right? This was the first time for most of these kids. Uh, is this the one where we were, were stepping on the splats? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have the same thing that the rest of you do. We can't do touching and all that kind of stuff. So stepping on the splats was really, really cool. And the kids took, um, they've been working on reading music notes. So each of the splats was programmed with a different note. And then they played along with it. Awesome. All right. I'm going to show the video now. Here we go. Two, ready, go. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> okay, so some of you are asking about signing up for the webinar tomorrow. Uh, Ariana is going to send a link to Zoom link to sign up to register for that uh, in a moment. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just going to walk through a couple of you asked for two activities for the two splats. Um, after this webinar, I'm actually going to send you a PDF of um, five activities that were designed for just two splats. Uh, but my favorite ones are voting machine and red splat, green splat, because those are perfect for both in person or you can also do them virtually. Uh, and so this is what voting machine looks like. And really, this is just a super pared down version of what we just played, would you rather, right? So when program starts, this is just really differentiating between splats one and two. And so when the program starts, and that's when you press the run button that we were talking about, um, in this code, it says light slot one with color green or light slot two with color blue. And so you guys can change these colors to be whatever you want. You can also add sounds. So um, cats and dogs is one that's really fun. So you can say, do you like cats better or dogs better? Um, you know, would you rather fly or would you rather be invisible? And you can attach sounds and colors to that so that you can actually see on the physical splats which one is which and then you can get your students coming up and voting and so the program starts one is really just to say which spot is which and then the pressing is the voting so when spot one is pressed you change the spot one score and when spot two is pressed it changes the spot two score and there's no fancy press spot five and then it reveals the big winner this code is very simple it'll just show you right away what's happening so I'm actually gonna show you right now. My splats are flashing blue 
And you might notice this, or it's kind of a bluey gray. All this means is that your splat has timed out. So we have like a time saving mode. So if that happens, all you need to do is just turn it back on. And then you'll see that fun red light. So I'm gonna do that. And then we'll quickly build a voting machine. See if this works. I'm gonna start a new project. There are a couple little bugs in this program, but we're gonna do our best. So we're gonna say light spot one with color purple or orange, sure, that's great. And then light spot two with color pink, orange or pink. And then when spot one is pressed, we're gonna change the spot one score by one. And a fun fact, you can actually duplicate blocks by right clicking on them. So I'm gonna say when spot two is pressed, so I just duplicated that block. I'm getting real crazy. We're gonna change spot two score by one. So after I'm gonna connect my splats again because they lost connection. And splat two. All right. So now we've got our two splats. I'm going to start the program. Oops. So we got purple and, oh, is this one? Why isn't this one lighting up? Oh, because you've got it on one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> the code doesn't lie. It's, no. <laughs> so All right, so we got one done. There we go. We got pink and we got orange. And then when we press them, you'll see that my score, I'm pressing them live on the bottom here. And you'll see on my screen, the scores are going up. So we can actually add a sound too. We can say, like I was talking about, play sound splat on one and play sound. We've got a drop down menu here so we can say symbol. So then let's start again, run the program. And you'll hear the sound coming out of the splats. And then the numbers for counting up, up here. Okay, so I had a lot of questions I think earlier about what to do with two physical splats and can you do, do that game with two physical splats? You absolutely can. This is just a pared down version of what that is and it's actually a great starting place. I've seen this done in kindergarten classes. So um, yeah, <laughs> this is a great one to start out with. All right, so that's voting machine. Um, let's try red splat, green splat. So this one is just, um, the sort of classic game, when it's red, you can go, or sorry, when it's red, you stop, and when it's green, you go. And so this one you can play virtually, or you can play in person. You can code it virtually and play in person, sort of a hybrid model. It's super easy, um, and it's gonna repeat it 30 times here, but you can change that repeat amount. You can change the random number uh, to a different number. You can change the colors if you want to. You can make it totally your own. This is just a super simple game uh, to get started. You can do it with two splats in person. You can do it virtually. Uh, it's, it's very flexible. All right, Liv asks, what can you do besides press the splats? And what are the other functions? So um, the two things that you can do with splats that are gonna make them react is you can start the program or you can press them. Those are the two things. So remember, I'll go back to our uh, coding screen here. These are the two things that are going to trigger something, right? Um, and so it doesn't matter if you, you can press it, you can stomp it. Um, there's buttons on the bottom of your splats. That's what's going to cause um, the spot to react, or you can start the program, right? So pressing run, that's what's going to start it. And then everything else is, um, is totally customizable. So um, there's a lot of room for flexibility in between. There's sounds. We have a new music block that this is a new addition uh, in the new app. Uh, scoring, math. So you can create all sorts of fun games. Relay races, dance games, obstacle courses, you name it. If uh, the students can dream it up, you can definitely code it with splats. All right, and does that answer your question, Liv? It's pretty simple. Like it, it, it's crazy how, how complicated and complex the code can get when it's actually, the input is very, very simple, um, but it creates a lot of room for flexibility. 
Awesome. Okay, and all right, this is where I'm gonna ask uh, Lori to share a little bit about what her experience has been with the slot so far, because Lori, you also won the grant uh, and you're just getting started. You said you didn't quite have an opportunity to try any of the virtual activities yet, but how are you planning to use them this fall? We are actually in person in um, at our school we're doing pods of kids so uh, the teachers travel from room to room and the kids stay in their pods so um, the problem is we wanted to have Chromebooks for all the kids through all this and the um, they haven't come in yet so what I've mostly been doing because it's pretty hard to practice coding when they can't get their hands on a computer is I've mostly just been showing them games and so, for example, today we used uh, Four Corners, but we did it, I, I kind of tweaked how it worked. I divided the kids into four teams and each team was a corner of, you know, like in the room. And then when we, um, I went through some uh, questions and then whoever uh, lit, uh, whoever's light went out on the Four Corners is, is rather than being eliminated, I had them answer questions. So, um, and if they didn't get the answer correct, I made them do some exercise. So that was the way I implemented some physical activity in the classroom. Um, so they had to watch, we were watching a video as we were doing this. And then I had review questions after a little bit of the, you know, I'd watch a clip and then have some review questions. And if whoever, who, who's ever team, had the light go out, which is how the Four Corners game works. And it, normally, I think you're eliminated, but I didn't want it to be that way. So, yeah, it was really fun. And the kids, you know, of course, I, I let them double down. And if they wanted to uh, let another team answer the question for them, they could. But then they'd have to do double exercise if they got it wrong. So, I don't know. We just had fun with it. And it was a, it was a good way to um, keep them active and still, you know, try to keep their attention and get them engaged to listen to what I was trying to present to them, so. Awesome, I love that you're combining, because uh, you're a, a tech instructor, so I love that you got them using, doing exercises in the classroom. I think. Yeah, you know, I mean, I figure I, I'm a PE major and I was a former music teacher, so, uh, and now I'm a tech teacher. So I, yeah, all three things are like <laughs> my favorite things and they, they are all things that splats can do, so pretty cool. That's awesome. I actually didn't know you were a PE major. I'm learning yeah. new things about you every day, Lori. You're so well, well you know. <laughs> Yeah, it, you know, I did, I taught junior high PE for a long time. So, and, and also K-12 music at a small school. So yeah. And then now I'm tech. So it's, it's been, it's been a great uh, way to, to, you know, envelop all of my, my passions with these flats. So I've loved it. Awesome. And both of you attended the boot camp that we did right. in, um, in our, or a couple of weeks ago, actually. Can you tell us about what that was like? Um, you know, how was it working with Emily and the, on the customer support team? And how did you find the, uh, the support so far at Unruly? Well, I, I have honestly had great support. Um, so I've sent in a few questions and asking for some help. My very first day, I wanted to do tr two truths and a lie as a icebreaker. And uh, Emily sent it to Ryan and Ryan, you know, came up with a great, you know, quick code for playing two truths and a lie. And we played that the very first day and the kids love that. That was really fun. And then I've, I've asked several questions and always got a response, um, well thought out response, nothing but great support. So Emily's amazing. She's really good with the educational part of it and, and she's been very helpful. So, yeah. And I think that, well, I think Emily's amazing too, but the whole team it works together so well. And whenever I've had a question, I've been doing things both on PC and on iOS. So I have sometimes the compatibility was a little bit different or I had a question about something. I'm excited about the new things that are coming up in 2.0 because there are things that we had mentioned to the team, you know, about various things. So it, it's very exciting. But the materials that you all have put together, the written materials and there are some video tutorials, they're amazing. You can stop and start them. 
Uh, you can give small portions to students. Um, they're just, they're very well thought out. It's not, it's not difficult at all. And that would be my suggestion is rather than thinking, oh, I've got to create all this stuff, there's stuff available that you can break down into small bits. And as you become more comfortable, then you can add, I mean, that's how I'm doing some of the things I'm doing now As I looked and said, well, maybe I could try this. But I started with the basics that are already there with games and the musical splats I used and it just made such a difference. So when I first got my splats, I was pretty overwhelmed and I'm, I'm pretty tech savvy, but I just, I looked at it and said, oh my gosh, there's just so much. And I went to a webinar and then I went to the boot camp. but as I started working with it and the kids are going to, are going to do fine. They just love it. So the biggest thing was, um, one of the things we talked about in SEL, in the SEL webinar, did they have fun? Did they learn something? Yeah. And if I can answer both questions for myself that way, then I'm making progress. And I, I don't have to know all the answers. I just have to know that there are people that I can go to to ask. And that's what the team is for. Yeah. I'm so glad that you brought that up, Kathy, because I definitely want, if there's one thing you take away from this whole webinar, uh, it's that you don't have to have all the answers and that you're not supposed to. This is, uh, you know, splats are, um, are about creating community and collaborating and mixing STEM and play and having fun. And so, um, you know, that's a great attitude to have. You shouldn't feel like you have to have all the answers right away. Um, you know, students are your greatest asset. They can help you figure it out. They can play around with it. It's very exploratory and it's fun. Uh, and so I think, you know, the, the teachers, I'll say that the educators that are most successful with SPLATs are the ones that, um, you know, have fun with their students and, and don't put all that pressure on themselves to have all the answers or do everything perfectly or, you know, be a coding pro before they get started. That's totally not, uh, not necessary and uh, not the expectation. Or, uh, so thanks for bringing that up, Kathy. That's super important. So... One other thing that I'll just say before we uh, go into question period is, um, so what's next? We kind of threw a lot at you right now. Um, we're gonna send you an email tomorrow with your account login information uh, for app 2.0. Uh, definitely recommend checking out the tutorials in our app. Um, we have pre-built games in the app that are awesome as well. Um, if you log into the portal through our website, you can access that by just going to unrealysplats.com clicking log in and creating an account there. Um, you know, there's all, all of our lesson plans are there and you won't have to fill out the, uh, the submission form to download them, they're just all there. And then try a game or activity with your students, you know, whether you're in person or virtual, I know a lot of you said that you were hybrid. So, you know, that could be that you're coding it synchronously or asynchronously uh, virtually and then actually getting to play the game together in person. Um, we also have a guide for how to play certain games socially distanced. Um, so that's all included in our activity packs as well. Um, so there's lots of options to get started, but definitely start by just digging into our app and exploring and having some fun. Um, so anything else to add, Kathy or Lori? I feel like uh, you guys are sort of just a little, a couple weeks ahead of everybody here on, on the call. I mean, really, like you were in their exact same shoes a few weeks ago. Yes. Uh, so any advice? Well, personally, I still feel like I have a lot to learn. There's always something new. But as I see, as I go through the packets and I learn new things, I start to see new ways that I can use it. For example, that uh, turning the music, the splats into music notes. It was a, a five- pentatonic, a uh, five note pentatonic scale. And I thought, hey, wait a minute, we can do that. The kids absolutely loved it. Uh, we had to take turns because I, I was having some technical difficulties with the Wi-Fi at the school. But um, I just typed this in the chat. Students love to hear, well, that didn't work so well. And then helping to figure out how to make it work. So the kids are loving it. In fact, one of them saw me today in the hallway, one of the third graders, and said, are we splatting today? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Not till Friday. <laughs> and that's so true. Uh, you know, we at Unruly really definitely embrace, uh, as, as we said in the beginning of the webinar, bugs in our code. We think bugs are a great thing. And if you ever find a bug or in, in our code or, you know, it's, bugs should be celebrated. It's something exciting. It's a big puzzle to solve. So 
I think approaching it with that attitude is, is awesome. Super unruly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So we're going to go into Q and I know there's a couple questions back here. I saw one, um, the connection screen. So if you are using our old app, I'm just going to pop up here. Uh, you can access our old app at app.unruly.studios.com. And I'll just show you how to connect your slides in that screen as well, um, since I think there was a question about connecting. So bear with me. In the meantime, if anybody has any other questions, please feel free to type them out in the chat and uh, Ariana can kind of help us navigate that. Uh, the recording will be available. Yes, I'll send you the recording as well. Awesome. We have the link to tomorrow's webinar. If people just joined, we will be doing another webinar tomorrow at 5 p.m. And it's going to be a little different. We're going to be talking about um, our four key virtual activity packs. And so again, those can be played virtually or in person, but they were designed uh, as student facing activities that students can kind of explore on their own uh, synchronously or asynchronously. Uh, and so we'll be talking about how to implement those specific activities. So if you're excited about the Morse code activity pack or the musical spots activity pack or the SEL activity pack, um, come check out our webinar tomorrow and you'll learn a little bit more um, nuance uh, details about that. So Here's our old app. I just wanted to quickly show because there are a couple questions here. So you have two spots here. So my spots have timed out. I'm turn them on again. All right. I'm going to click this button. So that's a little different than on our old app, or sorry, our new app. Okay, this one, and then this is the other plus button. Okay. All right. So they're both paired now. And then if we click the, ID, it's already did, did automatically, but if we click the ID button, that's how you can tell the difference between spot one and spot two. And so that's really important, of course, when you want to say, okay, spot one turns green and spot two turns red because you're deciding on a boat, uh, you need to know which slot is which. So a lot of times we actually get questions about like, oh, can I name my slots or should I label my slots? Uh, slots are anonymous. And so each time you disconnect them and connect them again, it's gonna be a different number and that's done very intentionally. And so they're a lot more flexible. So if you're, you know, end up getting six spots or you wanna play a game uh, with more spots, uh, you know, all you have to do is press ID and you can even get into complex coding where it's like, okay, you have to press spot two before spot one lights up. Uh, and it's very important just to know which slot is which so you can move them around in the room uh, how, where you want them to be. And where, you know, if you want spot one to be at the other end of the room and spot two, we have a couple of relay races where you want to run down to the other end of the room and press spot, press spot two, uh, and then spot one will light up a color and add a point. All right, does that answer? I can't remember who asked the question. Somebody asked the question, uh, how to connect your spots in the old app. Nicole and Kyla, I think, was talking about that too. Awesome. All right, so any other questions on um, how to connect your slots, how to get started, where to find things? Um, I'll just quickly show you on our website here. So firstly, we have our, um, our e-learning page. So all of our um, virtual activities are here. So if you just need like one hub to find all the virtual stuff. Um, but if you go log in, uh, and I've already created an account, but that if, you, if you're logging in for the first time, it'll prompt you to put in your email and, and your name. And if you just click log in, then you'll have access to everything in one place. And you can actually filter by student facing or lesson plans, classroom tools. We have some um, digital cards here. Um, we have some guides. So this is the iPad guide I was talking about if you're planning on doing any virtual content without physical spots. Um, but they're all here. Um, awesome. Any other questions that I didn't get to, Ariana, that you saw um, coming in through the chat? I know there was a lot going on, so I couldn't quite keep up, but. 
No, um, I think that you were able to tackle a lot of them, but I, um, I hope everyone was able to see the webinar link for tomorrow night. So if you are uh, interested in um, getting access to that, make sure you sign up there. Um, and we will send a recording. I know that Lauren has said that a few times, but if you do have any other questions that come up, um, remember that I am your resource as is Lauren um, and many others obviously within Unruly. So do not worry. We will make sure to answer anything that comes up tonight or anything that you have in the next couple of weeks. Um, but we are excited that you can use the 2.0 app and, and have some fun with your students. Awesome. All right. When is 2.0 available? Um, so it's available now. Um, it's in beta right now. So we're going to give you guys early access and it's sort of uh, as your trial for um, until November 1st. Uh, so I'll send out, but you do need to log in with a username and password first. So we're going to send that to you uh, either tomorrow or, um, or at least by Friday. So you guys will all be able to log in to app 2.0 to check out um, all the new features, which is exciting. Um, I know a lot, a lot of you might have poked around in our old apps. You can continue to do that and it's, it's still going to work. Both apps will be out there, um, especially as we uh, continue to improve app 2.0. But if you ever have any feedback, uh, please let us know because we're always making improvements to make it better for you guys. So awesome. And this will be, yeah, this is recorded. So if you missed anything in the beginning, uh, you can watch it all over again. <laughs> Great. So I hope that, um, you know, if there's one thing that you guys took away from this is that Splats, um, you know, you don't need to know everything to get started. Uh, it's super easy to just connect them and explore on the app. Um, you can play them virtually, you can play them in person, you can do a little bit of both. Um, and in my email after, I'll also send you our activity packs that were designed to play with two Splats. Um, so you can kind of get started right away. My, my dream would be that you guys are using your two Splats tomorrow in class. So um, I hope that you learned a lot from this webinar. And if you have any questions afterwards, uh, I'll put my email in the chat and you can uh, email me directly. Or of course, feel free to, um, to write us in the chat now too. We'll be here. Uh, so thank you so much for joining. Uh, Lori, Ariana, Kathy, anything to add? Just have fun. <laughs> Enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. And thank you so much to, uh, to Lori and to Kathy for joining us tonight. They were in your shoes. They are still in your shoes. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I'm signed up for the, I'm signed up for the webinar tomorrow. So <laughs> awesome. Great. Yeah. yeah. I hope everyone signs up for the webinar tomorrow too. I think we'll go a little bit more in depth specifically into the virtual activities, but um, yeah, we're your resource. We're here for you uh, to answer any questions and, uh, and help you be successful with sleds. Awesome. Thanks for joining everyone. Uh, have an awesome Wednesday night. I know we went a little bit over. Sorry about that. Um, but enjoy the rest of your evening and hopefully I'll see all of you tomorrow at our webinar tomorrow. It'll be fun.